Hey guys, it is Miss Sim Reno. If you are returning to the channel, welcome back. And if you are brand new, I am very excited that you decided to join me here today for another speed build. And today we are building another base game only home. It'll likely be my last base game restricted build for, well, maybe a little while. I <laughs> have absolutely loved doing a bunch of base game only builds. I think over the last couple of weeks, I have actually done four or five, maybe six. No, six is a lot. It's probably like four or five base game homes. <laughs> and they've all been slightly different, though, you know, it is kind of a challenge to diversify things with using only base game. However, I equate it to this. So first, let me explain that making decisions when decorating or building with base game is actually very easy for me. It became very easy. It became very quick. The decision process was very, very fast. And I equate it to having something like Netflix, Hulu, and cable and saying there's nothing for me to watch. Where there's so many choices that you just can't decide on something. So you end up watching the same things over and over again. That's what it felt like having all of the packs. So trying to challenge myself and do base game only made me realize that having so many choices actually made it harder for me to design things and put things together. So this was kind of a welcome break from that where my decision making process was so easy with base game only. It came together so fast. I didn't hesitate where I normally would, maybe in using a particular decoration or I don't know. There are just so many small instances of that not being able to make a decision when I didn't have just base game. <laughs> I hope this is making sense. But anyway, this build is actually not even inspired by something I found on Pinterest, but it is an exact replication, at least to the best of my ability, using a game like The Sims to try to recreate this home. But I did find it on Pinterest. I think it originated from architecturedesign.com. And the plan was called Stately Home for a Corner Lot, which is quite specific. So I think I'm going to be calling this a stately base game home. <laughs> I'm really not sure. I don't really know what um, stately refers to for I guess an architecture style or a design style really at all, but I'm just gonna go with it. So I will put the picture in the bottom left-hand side of the screen for just a little while so you guys can see what I was trying to work off of. I did take some creative liberties here and I put an extra dormer window on that highest roof piece. I just thought it looked nicer than kind of what they had for this design. And again, we all know that carrying things over from real life to The Sims can be a little challenging sometimes, but I think I kind of made it work, at least to the best of my ability. And the exterior is pretty much coming together at this point. Since I didn't look at the floor plan or the back of this particular home plan, I ended up just carrying over this piece from the front and replicating it on the back, which is something I do very often. I try to steer away from it at times only because it can get a little bit repetitive. At least that's how it feels when I'm constantly trying to build things and create something, but it does get a little bit repetitive. So I did change it up just a little tiny bit. I was thinking of even carrying over the porch to the entire back of this home, but I thought it would look almost a little bit too drawn out. It would almost look a little bit too wide. I, I can't think of the right word, but I just didn't think it would look that great to do almost a full farmer's porch. That's kind of what I was thinking, but I didn't end up doing it just because I really didn't think it would look that great. But now I am working on the landscaping, which of course I really like. This is probably my favorite part of any build. I used to really despise my landscaping and it has changed a little bit over the course of the two years that I've well, almost two years that I've been doing YouTube, but, and kind of building things. However, I think that this was pretty tame considering how I like to make things very overgrown and very, very full and flush. I think this was me dialing it back a little bit because thinking of this as like this stately home is, you know, what this was called, the design plan. I didn't think that the landscaping would be too overwhelming. It wouldn't be overgrown as if someone hadn't tended to it. It would be manicured to an extent, but I did want there to be some diversified plants. So I used, I think, three or four of the same plants throughout all of the landscaping. You can see I took those out of the debug menu, the kind of low-lying purple flowers. I used these hedges at times, and then I used the hydrangea as well as the daisies. And my favorite shrub, like that is my favorite shrub, kind of the tall taller one, the bulbous tall looking one that I really, really like and I use in almost every single build that I 
pull together. Love that shrub. There's a version in the debug menu, which is the version that I use that actually has three different swatches because there's one in the regular build and buy, but it's really bright green. And I just, I just don't think it looks very realistic. So I actually use the darkest swatch available when I grab the version of it out of the debug menu. So if you guys were wondering, um, that is how I end up with this darker version compared to the bright green one in the build and buy. It's always from debug. I try to use a lot of debug plants actually, because granted, I'm not concerned about a budget for this home. If I were doing a starter home or something like that, it would be a focus to use the debug menu plants because they're mainly free. They don't cost a thing. And if you think about the amount of simoleons you could spend on landscaping a build, <laughs> it would be astronomical and you wouldn't be able to even make a starter home that was very appealing, at least in my opinion. It would really be a struggle for me to do that. So yeah, I just end up using debug plants a lot and now I'm fencing in the backyard and out here there are a fair amount of activities to do. Now, since this was a maybe a fancier, more expensive home, I decided to give this family a hot tub. It literally hurt me to place down that hot tub because I'm still like I'm personally offended by the fact that we got that hot tub for the 19th anniversary or the 20th. I don't remember anymore. Was it the 20th anniversary? Yeah, it was the 20th anniversary. I was offended by that because I, I just hate it. I hate that hot tub, but <laughs> I, we don't have anything else. Like you can either build a pool, you can have gardening plots, you can have the monkey bars for kids. You can have the playground equipment, which is just freaking huge. And there really isn't anything else that you could put outside. Maybe a rocket ship, but I mean, um, I'm tr I was trying to make this just your basic suburban home, not for like a rocket scientist or something like that. So I, I don't know. I just didn't put a rocket. It wasn't going to fit the family. I had in mind at all. But so yeah, I used the hot tub. I made this little seating area here with like an outdoor rug, which I thought was really nice. There's also a table, an outside dining table, so your Sims can kind of grill and hang out there. And then there is the monkey bar set that I end up putting in the backyard for their one child. I was picturing this family as having one child in one teen Sim, and I mainly made that decision only because I was realizing how much room I would have on the interior. And I was thinking, what are all of these rooms going to be? Like there's going to be so many rooms and if they don't have any kids, I have no idea what all of these rooms are going to be filled with. I was running on empty, but now we are working on the interior trying to sort out the floor plan. Now I did have an idea as to where I wanted the stairs. That was the only thing that I kind of sorted out prior to jumping on to the interior. So I, I kind of divvied that up a little bit off camera, but I do typically leave a lot of my floor planning in my builds, as you guys know at this point. And the upstairs was kind of the challenge and it was mainly because of the stairs. I could find no other good place to really put them to be able to divvy up the upstairs floor plan in a way where the bedrooms weren't connected. I wanted there to be an open kind of landing area where you could access all of the bedrooms without having to go in one bedroom to get to another. That's kind of what I'm trying to say. And I also struggled big time because of removing the floor and making this a open staircase. Now, it didn't bother me because what bothered me more was not removing the floor to make this an open staircase, but I think it's the trim technically from the roof does clip onto the interior of the build. It is insane. I don't know why that happens. I already had had to pull the roof piece back one and then just extend the lip of the roof to have it cover the part of the build that it was trying to cover so it didn't clip into the house. Like I don't understand why that even happens when it's a closed off room. It doesn't make any sense to me and it drives me nuts. But we are trying to figure out the color scheme here. I was originally going to start in the kitchen but I really had no idea what I wanted the kitchen to look like. I just knew that I wanted a darker color scheme in this home. When I approach base game builds, I end up making them almost like pastel colored or they're just very neutral or very just bright and really open. I don't know, but this one, I wanted it to be a little bit darker because I wanted to see one, if I would even like it and two, what was possible with base game for a darker color scheme that wasn't uninviting, I suppose. I don't know why I associate a lot of darker color schemes with having with being like an uninviting space, but for some reason that's programmed in my brain and I really wanted to fight that. So <laughs> I use a lot of darker wood tones, which I do very much like for the base game items. I think the darker tones are really pretty. It's the whites, the white swatches of the base game items that I think need an overhaul. They almost have like a blue tint to them. And I've mentioned that before in a base game build at some point, but they 100% just need an overhaul. I don't know why they look blue. It, 
It's crazy, it is. But now we are on to the living room here and there's a little bit of footage that I ended up cutting out because this did take me a little bit of time to sort out, but I ended up using this black, dark wood toned and gray color scheme. And I thought the orangey or almost yellow light looked really nice. I think I do change it later, however, because at least for screenshots, I really just prefer the white light because it captures all of the true colors of the items that you use instead of adding this kind of gold hue to everything. And then over here through this archway is the formal dining room. Now there is a formal dining room and there is also a table in the kitchen for very informal meals. I felt as though a house like this though really needed a formal dining space and it's a bigger table than I would typically do in a dining room. At least for some of my other base game homes, they've just been maybe a four seater, but I thought it would be, well, I'll just bring in the word again, very stately to have this nice big long dining table so they could entertain either friends or something like that. Maybe they plan on expanding the family. Maybe they are the home that hosts the family reunions or something. I'm just spitballing now. And there's also a little china cabinet there, which is a little bit modern. So I meant to mention that as well. I didn't want this to be a modern home, but there are maybe a few more modern pieces throughout the build, only because they came in the swatches that I needed them to come in compared to some of the more traditional items that I use. I end up removing that love seat as well because I thought it looked a bit too cramped behind those dining chairs. I just put another dining chair there, kind of a spare, and I think just a plant or something just to fill the space just a little tiny bit and I ended up getting rid of that bookcase as well because again it just looked really really cramped but I thought that the wall was so big that it needed more. I don't think I ended up putting more things I just left the pieces of artwork and that was it. I kind of fought the urge to overdo it so I was kind of proud of myself there but now I'm working on this I don't really know what you would call this. It's kind of a landing area for the bottom of the stairs, I suppose. I was going to jump over there, but then I kind of had inspiration strike to go back to the kitchen. So I ended up using these, the black swatch of this base game countertop, which I love. I love, I love, I love it so much. This is probably my favorite base game countertop and cabinets, to be frank. But I really like the black swatch in particular because it almost looks like true black almost it has a little bit of a blue hue to it as well but it's almost true black and i really really like it and i thought it fit perfectly with using the black tiles and it's a little bit odd because i didn't use tiles in the kitchen i usually do as like a backsplash but i ended up just keeping the paint instead which felt a little bit odd it almost the paint almost looks like it has a purple tint to it which i think purple and black go really really well together so it kind of works because it's soft enough that it's not screaming like I'm a very bright color and I contradict this more like neutral like black dark wood tone <laughs> I'm not making any sense but I don't know I just really liked it I didn't think a back backsplash was necessary especially with the tile in the kitchen to begin with and I just decorate it as I normally do my kitchens thankfully I think with base game we have a lot to decorate kitchens but then I used these little pieces here they're technically wall decorations and I put these hanging plates in them I thought it looked kind of nice like I don't know <laughs> It looked a little bit weird, I think, initially, but I thought it turned out okay. And then I also put a rug here in the center, but I end up creating a small island too, just with a flower in the middle, so there is a bit more counter space. I think your Sims would have been fine with the one counter available, but I wanted to make sure there was space for them to actually use the kitchen. And then this is going to be the half bathroom, which is very simple. Nothing really exciting to say about the bathroom, though I will say that this kind of color scheme in the bathroom is replicated upstairs in the two full bathrooms and one of those full bathrooms is mainly for the kids so the kid and the teenager whereas the other one isn't technically an ensuite but it's mainly for the parents at least that's what my thought process was and then I put a little chess table here in this little kind of like almost a bay window it's not quite a bay window but it kind of almost is and then I put a desk at the bottom of the stairs as well so that's kind of like the family computer that everyone can use if they need to but it's in this nice open space accessible to everyone so kids can be monitored if they are on the computer that's my thought there's also another bookcase and then I believe I put a little creativity table in here as well for the kiddo so they can have an activity to do I think they might even have a chemistry station I think that's what it's called right the chemistry station I think they have that in their bedroom so I tried to get a few more items for kids because they are very very limited with base game as well and then that is pretty much it for this little landing space I think I decorate 
this kind of back entryway to the porch in the backyard. There's just a few pieces of artwork, maybe a mirror. And then we end up moving on to the upstairs, which I really liked. I think getting to the bedrooms is my favorite part in any build because I love personalizing them for the Sims that I have in mind as long as I have inspiration for said Sims. But this is going to be the parents' room and they have a very modern looking bed. So again, another one of those modern pieces that I didn't want to, I didn't want it to really scream like I'm a modern house, but it's just a little bit of an accent and a mixture of the styles that are available with base game. But I really liked the parents' room. It was very simple. It was a bit lighter than I think the downstairs was, but again, using those darker wood tones and just kind of tossing up some artwork as well. I think there's a mirror above the bed, which almost looked just a little too high for me, but it ended up working okay. I couldn't really be bothered to lower it. And honestly, I couldn't even with the cheats, I would have had to use the tool mod or remove the wall and raise it with the control nine key, which I just didn't really want to do. I thought it looked okay. And here is their dresser, which I am just decorating with a few miscellaneous items, not trying to make it look too overcrowded, but definitely lived in. And then there's just another piece of artwork here, as well as just not an armchair technically, but it is considered like a living room chair, whatever that category is in the build by menu. I don't even really know. It's not an armchair because it doesn't have arms. I wish we had a version of that that had arms. Now that I think about it, I don't think there's a version of this base game chair like in this style that has arms, which is so weird because the couch has arms. Man, I kind of want one with arms. But anyway, their bedroom is coming together nicely and then I end up working on one of the bathrooms just so I could break it apart just a little bit in regards to the flow of the build because if I had jumped right into the bedrooms and left the bathrooms for last, Eh, that's kind of boring, <laughs> at least in my opinion. But I also work on this little landing area as well. Now there is a double sink in here as well as a separate bathtub and shower, which I thought was a little bit different from what I normally do. I thought it was kind of a, a nice thing to add. I don't typically add just bathtubs because I, I feel this way. I don't know if this is true and you guys will have to weigh in here. When your Sim is taking a bath, does it typically take longer than them taking a shower? Because that's what I've thought. It seems like it takes them longer no matter where their hygiene is at. It just takes them longer in the bathtub, which would make sense. Like in real life, I feel like a bath takes longer than a shower. It just does. I, I just feel like it does. I don't know why, but it does. And I feel like it takes longer in The Sims. So having a shower was at least necessary so I could speedily get Sims out the door if I ended up using this build for gameplay or if you guys did. So definitely weigh in there because I'm not sure if I'm just imagining it or if it's actually true. And then I work on this little landing area a bit, which is very lightly decorated. I've mentioned this before as well. I think sconces add a lot of decoration to walls as well. So putting a lot of those throughout this build helped make it feel a little less empty, at least in my opinion. There's also a mirror right at the top of the stairs and just a little side table with a plant. And then there's a little side table over here with a lamp before you enter. I think that's going to be the kids room. And then this is going to be the bathroom that the kids mainly use. So they have the shower tub combo. They do not have a double sink, but there are a few different items in there that really emphasize that it is a kids room. There's like, I think the little garbage pail that's for kids. I think I end up putting a nightlight off camera just because with kids, that's still really important to have in game. And I don't know, it's very simply decorated. Nothing too extravagant whatsoever, but I put a couple of clutter items on top of the counter here. And of course the little toothbrush and the soap. I mean, if you're gonna be able to get detailed with base game, it's mainly in the kitchens and the bathroom. So I try not to skimp on it. <laughs> But yeah, that's pretty much the kids bathroom there. And then this is for the actual child in the family. Now this could be for a daughter or a son. It really does not matter whatsoever. Just that the color scheme is very soft, which I really liked. I think for kids rooms and nurseries, I don't like making them exceptionally colorful more often than not. It might even depend on my mood, who knows, but <laughs> this one was very soft. So compared to the rest of the home, which had these really dark wood tones, I tried to kind of almost make this, I think the bedspreads, it looks like it has blue and maybe a soft green or turquoise. So I tried to find a wallpaper color that really matched it. And I think this one matched it really well, at least the kind of the leaf details on the comforter. Again, a modern accent because this bed frame is rather modern. And then there are a couple of these cloud shelves over here over the bed, which I thought was really cute. I just kind of put a couple of different toys or sculptures, I think is what they're technically under when we're thinking of the category. And I think the little piggy bank too, actually it's really a unicorn bank, not a piggy bank, but I really love that. And I was kind of thinking about this recently, especially when I used it in this build. I wish that we could use those. Wouldn't that be so freaking cute? 
if the kids could use those little unicorn piggy bank things, if they had like their own little allowance fund, I thought that would be so freaking cute. I think I had seen a mod for that somewhere. I can't remember where, but I'm sure someone has thought of that before. I just thought it would be a really cool idea and I kind of really wish that was the case. And I also feel like I'm complaining a lot in this voiceover. I'm really not. I had a blast with this home and I really like how it came out, but there are definitely some things with base game that I wish would either be updated or I don't know, just looked at again, maybe revamped just a little tiny bit to make it I don't know, to make it that much more amazing, I really think base game has a lot to offer. Don't get me wrong, I really think it does. And that's why sometimes I will make base game only builds. And sometimes I'll literally only play with base game to the best of my ability. I don't like uninstall packs, but I try to only leverage base game features sometimes when I play. And it's actually really fun for me. So I don't know. I kind of wish that they would tweak some things in base game to make it that much more amazing, especially for those who might be just getting into The Sims. I think it would be really cool. Anyway, there's the little chemistry station as well, and they have their little reading corner, and then there's just another movie poster and that giraffe decoration, which I think is so cute. I don't really know why we have it. When we look at some of the other decorations that we have, it doesn't seem to really fit any theme, but I'm not complaining. I think it's cute. And now we're working on the teenager's room, which again, I wasn't picturing any particular teenager, whether it was a daughter or a son. It doesn't matter whatsoever. All that matters is that this room is very very bold that's all i can think of is it's so bold like these colors are not what i would gravitate towards typically it's almost more color more pops of it very strong pops of it than i would ever anticipate using in a room but i loved how it came out and that was me pushing myself outside of my comfort zone which i really like doing more often than not it felt odd at first but I think it came together really nicely. And this teenager also has their own dresser here, which I think I do end up making it white, actually, to kind of match the trim and the other pieces of furniture that are in the room. And they also have their own computer and desk over in that little nook there. And the reason I did that is because I was envisioning that this teenager was closer to young adulthood. So maybe they're thinking about university soon, which I know with base game, you wouldn't be able to do that, but it's just kind of a thought story behind it that maybe they are gearing up to start university soon. So they did kind of need their own computer and workspace to really crank out their work since maybe they're staying at home while they attend classes, so maybe like a local college or something like that. And I don't know, that's pretty much it for the build. We're getting very close to the end. So I hope that you guys did enjoy this and I will catch you next time I post a video and I will talk to you very, very soon. Bye. be
shaken but not stirred Just a lesson that I've learned And so it goes Tables turn You're on your own When I think of us away